Welcome to our setup video for Logosol PH 260 4 sided planer. This video features first time setup and this is why it will take me slightly longer to set it up. Uh, this profile is slightly different from our standard TGV cladding due to the thickness and the actual profile of the blades. Uh, in this instance customer requested a tight fitting 28mm finished TGV profile. Unlike our standard tongue and groove cladding that has a mild leeway to accommodate timber movement, tight tongue and groove profiles are more suitable for doors and furniture making. I had some minor difficulties uh, setting up this profile, but you will see further on how to problem solve easily and how not to get discouraged. Uh, the best way to start setting up is to clean your machine completely. We want a nice clean surface to work with as we need to be precise. If you want to use airline like I have, make sure you wear appropriate PPE. In this instance, that would be gloves, safety glasses, respirator for the airborne dust and ear defenders in case your extraction fans are inside. We need to dismantle the previous profile. I had fitted a simple no bevel flooring profile with 6mm tongue and two stress grooves on the bottom. PH 260 is an amazing little machine. Uh, it's sold by Logosol. If you want to know more about the current prices and different options, I have linked the pages in the description. We are using a three-phase adjustable speed model. Um, unlike many traditional cantilevered planers, PH 260 uh, and its upgrade 360 uh, both have bottom and top cutter heads suspended at either end. Uh, this contributes to the machine stability, so planing full width is no big deal really. Uh, this planer is essentially a combination of a surfacer, planer and two spindle molders. Uh, and it works really well together. I have uh, removed the used blades and I am recording their name and quantity and they are ready for sharpening. Uh, we send our blades to be sharpened by a professional tooling company. I am now selecting the required blades and giving them a touch up with a diamond as they have been previously used for a small uh, similar job. They are placed in the cutter head and we will be installing them in a minute. I initially thought that I have recorded the profile I have used these blades for, but it seems that I haven't, so we will have to experiment a little and see what works best to get the desired profile. Uh, I would recommend to anyone to record at least some info on your previous jobs as this will reduce your setup time by a lot. You can see me counting my spaces, also known as shims. This will help me determine the amount I need to put at the opposite side. Uh, something to keep in mind, uh, the base height of the spindles are sometimes a few fractions of a millimeter different. Uh, this is okay because all your profiles will be offset by the same amount, so you can either permanently keep the required spacer in or you can add it every time. I like to add mine every time. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that not all machines have the same height or the same difference in height, so you will have to adjust accordingly if you were to use my uh, profile recipes. It's also time to change my top cutters and this is something you can see me doing here. I change these essentially when they're blunt, usually before and after a big job or after a wet batch. I'm sending these top blades to get sharpened as well. Uh, you may have noticed that I have removed a much shorter blade and replaced it with a longer one. The maximum blade length is 300mm in the bottom cutter and 410 in the top. Great thing is that 300 blade fits in the top as well without disturbing the balance. Next up is adding V to the TGV. We do this by adding another set of blades in the top cutter. 
And before I forget, I'm removing the stress groove blades out of the bottom. We need a good stable reference point, so now we will set the fence. This tool is also sold by Logsol and it allows you to offset the first fence by 2mm compared to the second fence. So basically your side cuts are taking off 2mm when you're feeding the wood in. I'm sure you can get these made uh, to take off 3 and 4mm. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going any higher than that. This tool was originally made from aluminium. I had mine made from steel just because the blades were chipping off the aluminium and the distance wasn't as precise as I would like to be. You can see here that the machine had been used already. I ran out of battery and haven't recorded inserting the top cutters, but you will see me adjusting these several times more. I ran a test piece and it didn't come out as I expected. Uh, symptoms were that it wasn't planing one side on the bottom. The boards were the same thickness throughout, but when uh, joined, one side was higher than the other on the face but flush on the bottom. Uh, I spent another half an hour trying to figure out the physics behind the whole thing and by the third adjustment I was getting rather annoyed by the whole thing. It was getting quite late uh, by this point and I decided to sleep on it. The next day diagnosis was that the tool I used to set the bottom blades didn't hold them straight and one side was higher than the other and therefore it wasn't planing one end. This is where I've changed the bottom blades and went over all of other blades to make sure they're all nice and level. I had to move back the first fence to be able to access the bottom cutter and this is why I'm having to set the fence again. I'm now setting the distance between the second spindle and the second fence. I'm setting it here to 150mm which is the starting size of the boards I'll be putting through. I'm now creating another test piece for myself and I've put this one through and it didn't play in the top which meant that the machine was set too high so I've adjusted that and then I have checked the bevels, they were not equal on both sides so I went back in and I adjusted the top cutters. This is the last piece going through. I've uh, cut the test piece in half and joined it together to see what it looks like. And the bevels look like as good as they were ever going to look. Unlike my shed, which is in a state, we are currently redesigning and there's stuff everywhere. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment. Uh, you can also send us a message on Facebook or through our website, uh, I will be linking these in the description below.